layout in here, everything is all on two foot and center. And uh, you have single top plate construction, which is not typical. Conventional is double top plate construction or two plates on the top of the studs in a wall. Okay, when you use a single top plate, you have to make sure that all your members stack. In other words, if you look up at the ceiling right here, and you look at, you look at the roof rafters coming across the ceiling, they line up exactly with the studs on the wall. So that whenever we're building, everything stacks so it loads properly. You can't take and put a load in between a couple of studs with a single top plate because it's just going to bend or sag the top plate down. You know, conventional building has the way of just throwing lumber at all structural problems. That's been the old norm over the years. You know, green building, our package here, even though this is a fairly decent sized house, a couple thousand square feet, you know, two foot on center framing allows us to cut down on our lumber packets. Uh, there's a lot less lumber in one of these houses, but they are not weaker. They're just as strong as a conventional built house or stronger. It's just that, you know, we pay more attention to the layout. Today we're installing windows and sealing for water and air. We went ahead at first and applied the uh, Sega permeable tape that allows water to come out as opposed to in. It pushes the water that does get back behind there out. Then we put a dual rubber gasket on the bottom to seal for air and water under. And we pock the perimeter of the tape to give us another water and air seal behind the flange. obviously with any door or window you're going to want to make sure the door is level and plumb. They're triple pane windows which are substantially heavier because of the glass obviously but they give you a better R value and temperature distribution through it is slower when you have triple and they use the gases in between as, as well. One thing that makes us different when it comes to fastening the window to the wall is that if this was a more conventional application, we would only put in enough screws to structurally hold the unit in place. One reason why we're putting the screw in every single hole is to get that good solid air seal on top of that cock. In other words, it's pulling that window tight against the plywood all the way around so we get a good air seal. In this particular house, our air seal is the plywood shear wall on the outside of the frame wall. That's our envelope, so to speak. And so every seam on that plywood is seal taped on every one of those seams to stop the air from leaking through there. Now on the inside, around the floor, in addition to the gaskets that are underneath the floor, we also have some sound and acoustical, you know, caulking, uh, draft, draft sealing. And you can see we've gone around the studs and up the plywood aways to stop any kind of air leakage down there that we can. You'll see that stuff here and there, all around, that, you know, it's just wherever we think there's any possibility of a leak, we seal it up with either some seal tape or some kind of, uh, you know, caulking or, or uh, um, you know, draft, draft sealant, foam. There's lots of products in here, probably five or six. We're getting ready to insulate. Before we do that, this is our last chance to check the air seal in the house. And so we have Zach here from Imagine Energy. And what he's doing is he's going to put a fan or a blower door a device on the door itself and seal it up and we're going to check for leaks. When we're talking about uh, ACH 50, which is air changes per hour at 50 pascals, what we're referencing is how many times the volume of air passes through the house, the entire house. When we pressurize it is when we get the smoke pencil out and you can puff the smoke and see where the smoke goes to. And we're going to check and see how much air actually escapes within a certain amount of time. See, there's a crack right here, a crack right there. And you're already sealed up better than 99% of the house in Portland, but already at this point. Contrasting uh, this, a passive house, which we're trying to achieve 0.6 air changes per hour, uh, you would probably find a typical code-built house to be five, six, or seven air changes per hour, so quite a bit leakier. 
So compared to the 0.6, it's huge. It's a, a, a really big accomplishment that they got there. So we're insulating today with dense pack cellulose and it's a fire retardant cellulose. It has some borate compound in it. They stick their nozzle in there and they just pump it in there until it has a dense pack of three and a half pounds per cubic foot. What, what that means is, is this, this material, the cellulose, you can see it's light and fluffy now, but they, they blow it into the wall until every area that's equal to one cubic foot has three and a half pounds of that cellulose in there. One foot would be about this big. It would be right there. It'd be 18 inches this way and one foot this way for seven and a half inches deep would be one. That's three and a half pounds of cellulose right there. So what they do is uh, the cellulose, they put it in here and what happens is it bulges a little bit in between the studs here. They, they, all, they go around here and they roll it and kind of condense it back into the bays a little bit so that it doesn't stick out so much. Makes it easier to put the drywall on.